In this video, I want to compare building this huge mono repo on these three machines. You might have heard of Turbo Repo and other types of mono repo setups. And if you don't know what a mono repo is, the simple explanation is it's a way to organize your code so that all your code bases, all your applications, and all your shared components all live in the same repository. Google is famous for this because they store all their code in one single repository. That might sound pretty crazy to you, but it actually works. I've been using next for a number of years now and there's a new player on the block called turbo repo here is their website they've just been acquired by Vercel. it's a small project right now but it's probably going to grow by the way nx is built by narwhal some of the people that worked for google before they founded this company narwhal and now they build nx uh, victor sofkin one of the people that works on nx he's created a mono repo sample application that has five apps in it and 27,000 shared components now these are not real apps but it's a good way to benchmark these applications i want to compare building this huge mono repo on these three machines what are these machines we got the macbook air m1 the macbook pro m1 pro with 10 cores and the macbook pro m1 max with 10 cores as well and this is a good test because for those folks that are doing front-end javascript development this is exactly that except on a large scale so this will demonstrate which one of these machines actually builds a large project faster. By the way, 27,000 components is not that huge. It's kind of a medium size enterprise application. There are enterprise applications with a lot more code and some that are smaller. So this is kind of middle of the road and it's a good test to see which one of these machines does it faster. I'm gonna make a prediction here and I'm gonna say that the two MacBook Pros are gonna be pretty much exactly the same as far as the build speed and the MacBook Air is not gonna be that far behind, but we're gonna see. If you wanna run this example yourself and see it for yourself, you can go to this URL. It's Victor Sofkin's GitHub account and the large dash mono repo is the name of their repository. So he created this to benchmark Turbo Repo versus NX to see which one is faster. And if you've seen my previous video on this, you'll know that NX is quite a bit faster. Now what I'm going to do here is slightly modify the test case just to show you what's going on here. Here is the mono repo code and this is the root package.json file. You can see that we have turbo here. We have the narwhal CLI, which is the NX CLI. They really should standardize on some kind of naming convention, narwhal or NX, but it's kind of confusing to see Narwhal in here when you've installed NX or you think you've installed NX. Anyway, there's a script here called Benchmark. So it's going to run Benchmark.js and Benchmark has uh, a number of iterations. I've changed this to five. It comes with 50 by default. That takes a while, but let's change it back to 50 because uh, I want to run this 50 times in a row, this build process to get a more accurate average over time. And that also might expose a little bit of throttling on the MacBook Air. We will see about that. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. So what this benchmark test does is it first preps the repository. It builds a turbo repo. Uh, it says concurrency equals three. And that means that it can run three build processes at the same time. So you can set this to 10. You can set it to one to do it in serial mode. And NX does the same thing. It has three in parallel here in NX.json. NX.json is a separate file that is configuration for NX. By the way, just one of the differences between NX and Turbo, among many, uh, is Turbo puts their configuration in package JSON, but NX has a special NX.JSON file. By the way, if you want me to cover more about these mono repos, let me know down in the comments below. We can go into a little more detail in another video or videos. All right, so we execute turbo build and then we execute NX build and we get an average. Let's do it. So I'm going to set this up npm run benchmark and I'm going to add my own time command, even though this will spit out the average time. I want to see how long the whole benchmark takes with all the 50 runs. So I'm going to time that whole benchmark execution. All right, so I've set this up on all these machines and now we're just gonna run it. You might've seen this little device before. <laughs> I don't have three fingers. So when I have multiple machines to run this on at the same time, this is what I use, the Schwarzenegger. All right, gotta hit the enter key at the same time on all three of these and make sure I don't miss. This is actually harder than it looks. I don't wanna fat finger any keys next to the enter key. And let's go. Woo. 
and we're off. All right, now these are running. And while it's running, you can kind of see what's happening here and how long the execution takes on each one of these machines. And it's interesting to see because, yeah, the two machines here, they're hitting about 2.6, 2.7 seconds for the turbo builds. This one is hitting about 2.8 for the M1. One more thing about this test is that it's actually a test of cash. So we're not building from scratch every single time because the first build takes a long time. What's nice about these mono repos is that it builds it incrementally based on what's changed in the previous build. So if you've built something and then you've changed some code, you're not going to change the entire code base. You're only working on a small section of it. So it's going to detect that change and build only the difference. So this test is actually checking to see how well the caching system works with the build process. Essentially, I think there should be another test that actually tests how long the build process takes from scratch when you completely blow everything away and rebuild it. Although we don't do that so often. So it'll be a nice test to see, but it's not super relevant when you're working with these mono repos day to day. All right, we're almost done here. Oh, the M1 Pro finishes first and then the M1 Max and the M1, of course. So here is the final result. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so the M1 Pro finished in 2 minutes and 36 seconds. The M1 Max finished in 2 minutes 41 seconds. And the M1, 2 minutes 46 seconds. I would say the most bang for the buck you're going to get is the M1. So if you're building front-end applications, in this case, these are React components, but really we're talking about just compiling TypeScript into JavaScript. So it could be whatever you're using, Vue, React, Angular, or just TypeScript. Most bang for the buck. Second most bang for the buck is the M1 Pro. And the M1 Max, although a very powerful machine, very expensive for that kind of performance. If that's all you're doing, then you might want to reconsider buying that machine if you were thinking about buying it. That's it for me today, folks. Hopefully this was valuable or interesting. If it was, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.